Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode I begin with a space tug and this is because we have a pod that is just sort of floating free that we would like to have dock to our station so that the Kerbals can get back on board. Uh, somebody had suggested just um, sending up a controller to take control of the of the vehicle but I decided a multi-purpose space tug would be a little bit more useful and of course, you know, our, our launcher capacity can easily handle that. Uh, you can see there's just an 11,000, there's the Nico 404, an 11,000 fun launcher. And that's even with the Saturn instrumentation unit that I decided to put on there just to get rid of all the tiny little Thor avionics units, even though there's overkill. But uh, yeah, so obviously for a space tug, we want storable fuels and then we can refuel it later on. And uh, so we needed engines get that can deal with that, and that basically left us with either the Asterisk 2 or the Advanced Gemini Lander engines. And since I wanted docking ports on both sides, uh, the propellant only went on top to dock with the pod, and then the Apollo docking system on the bottom to dock with the station, the logical choice was the Advanced Gemini Lander engines because they're smaller uh, physically, and of course they also have half thrust each of the Asterisk 2, and the Asterisk 2 is just sort of bulkier. It's more efficient though than these are, but um, that's because of the long nozzle and all. Um, I guess they, these are a little bit smaller than they ought to be, strictly speaking. But yeah, uh, RCS thrust is here, and you notice already the RCS extendable ones, excuse me, and that is because once we have a payload on there, this will give a little bit more um, control over the whole thing. And the center of mass of the combined thing, if we have a 10 pound, not 10 pound, 10 ton payload and a full tank here, this is where the center of mass will be. And if we don't have any payload and these are extended, then the center mass is around here so that we have the RCS thrusters here to facilitate with docking in that case. But yeah, so I'm going to try out using these extendable quads and they're also assigned uh, given the irazine and n204 configuration oops why do i keep clicking that go away i just wanted to retract that boom right now okay uh solar panels obviously it's got a thor avionics unit because we want it to be able to handle heavy payloads it doesn't have much thrust just on its own it's 0.3 and of course with uh, some sort of load it's gonna be less than that 12 minutes of burn time, and it's about the capacity of the Nico 404, 15 tons. So we're basically maxing this out, and uh, you can see um, altogether we have 9,700 meters per second. That gives us a little bit of buffer just in case something, uh, you know, uh, an engine fails or something like that. But it's still pretty quick to orbit. And that's all right because this is uh, not crude. All right, and it'll take 17 days to build it, so that'll be quick enough. We have the crew waiting for 30 days up there. I do have a question about whether it's actually counting the days right now, so we'll check on them after I start this building. Let me just make sure all of the staging is correct, and let's build one of these. Now, we also have our Mars Fuel Depot under construction, and it's just barely going to make that window. I'm going to move the tug up because it's sort of important, but we also have these Kelly capsules. Um, we really need to speed up the Mars Fuel Depot. Actually, I wonder, that rush build is 3,815. This one's much more expensive. So maybe rushing this one is the more logical choice. Costs a bit though. Um, I think we'll hold it there for a sec and we'll see how that goes. So nine days. Let's check on our mission. All right, here we are at the station and it looks like it is uh, tracking them properly. Um, time to completion on, well, okay, this one isn't tracking properly. It just started a timer on this crew duration record of 14 days. This first space station one, which has them up there for 30 days, that one realizes that they've been up for nine days already. So that works. This one is going to be a bit of a problem unless we time warp through those 14 days while we're focused on it. So yeah, that's an interesting fact. 
But I'm, I'm glad that at least this one is okay. Uh, let's double check our life support. Totally alright. I thought about doing uh, just a straight up crew rotation with the Kelly 4s. So docking a Kelly 4 on and then uh, bring those two crew up and then bringing these back. But of course that means that this other tracked vessel won't be the one to bring them back. So that might be a problem. I don't want to fail the contract because of something like that. And also we've got this annoying gap in the station which makes me want to launch a different station. So yeah, those yeah, so doing crew rotations based on this station I wasn't too hot on. So that's the thought. But anyway, that works. Uh, maybe we should time warp those 14 days, huh? Let's see. Where's our um, Kerbal construction time? Let's have that out. I want to see if we can fulfill. Oh, it doesn't want to stay out. Hmm. When I click the contract thing, it disappears this. Okay. Alright, uh, let's time warp a bit. I don't think I have anything else to do, right? This is the alarm clock. F of this is the Mars launch window. I have to be out here time warping, otherwise that clock won't run. Okay, our word tug is complete. Now, can we complete the Mars Fuel Depot in time for the launch? It looks like it. It'll be complete in 48 days, and the Mars window is in 52. Might take us four days to get it out on the launch pad. But, yeah, that should complete in time, so we don't have to rush build that. And we've got the tug waiting, just in case. Uh, let's oh, let's get rid of half of the things I've got showing right now and our contract okay four more days for that 14 day record I mean we might not need the space tug if we can get the station to rendezvous with the pod well enough for the Kerbals to transfer over via EVA That'll be simpler. I'm a little bit worried that it won't consider it the same vessel if I dock a tug to it. I don't know how these things actually work. Uh, electric charge is running out? How's that? Um, we might need to do the whole sun tracking thing. I've been negligent about that. It's got a lot of electric charge. It's got 800,000 right now. But Okay, wait. That, that would be good if we hold it right there. Okay, maybe I'll hold it there, just in case we can always run the fuel cells, but let's not do that yet. That's something else we'll have to send more of, hydrogen in particular. Okay, we've got the crew duration record, so that's fulfilled. That's pretty good, 275,000 and 63 reputation, but we can't sneeze at any reputation now, can we? Uh, pushes up. Uh, still in the red zone there, but still better than where we were before. Okay, I guess we'll just keep it orbiting for six more days. I think they'll be all right. Food, water, and oxygen is definitely all right. Hydrogen seems to be all right, too. Okay, we've completed 30 days. Now we just need to return home. So where is our vessel? Well, that's Spaceport 1, and that's also track. That is... No, I want to target that. Yes, set as target. So can we rendezvous with the with the little vessel? Or is that going to be an issue? Let's see. Okay, I think if we just raise our orbit just a little bit, eventually it'll be able to catch up with us, right? Because it's behind us right now, but we'll be sort of slowing down if we raise our orbit. So let's go prograde now. That will take us off of our sun orientation. So I'm just gonna go 40 meters per second up and then that'll mean presumably 40 meters per second back down again. That should leave us enough buffer in the station. I really don't want to have to refuel this right now. I mean, the downside is, of course, the all the glitchiness about EVAing, and I'll have to make sure that 
The orientation of the doors is fine so that we don't have the kerbals bouncing off again. I think it'd be sufficient if we can meet up with it in four orbits. So if the closest approach distance is 1.2 million meters or 1,200 kilometers and the current distance to target is 1,600, that means we're gaining 400 or it's gaining 400 each time. That should be good enough. And that'll also limit how much relative velocity we've got. On the right side, we could always use the tug to refuel the station. Um, oh, cancel that. The station uses MMH and N204, though in an imbalanced ratio, we could just send up some N204 and get a little bit more delta V. I don't even see any encounter. Are we at least catching up to it? Wow, very much not. What the heck happened? Yeah, somewhere along the way I went completely wrong here. Okay, let's launch the tug. Okay, well we're currently targeting the, the spacecraft, the Kelly 3 EO, Earth Orbit Edition. And it's actually ahead of us right now. I guess that's alright. We should have launched already, but let's just get going. Thrall up, SAS is on, and ignition. And launch. Tug on the Nico 404. Okay, we're definitely past the speed of sound, past 10 kilometers, everything looks all right. Okay, separation and ignition. So obviously we'll go into a lower orbit to catch up. Fairings. Looks like the launcher can handle more than 15 tons, but we want some buffer in case of engine out. We are basically 500 meters per second more than we need right now. Okay, getting close to the end here. Let's throttle down. Okay, that should be good. Close, well, unfortunately I didn't deorbit this. Oops. Um, but yeah, we're gonna gain a little bit each round. I might wanna go a little bit slower than that, we'll see. Okay, let's get the solar panels out. Okay, and we don't need that anymore. And separation. RCS forward. RCS is all working. Okay, I haven't plotted anything again, and considering how badly the station maneuvers went, maybe this is a bad idea, but I believe all I have to do is lift my orbit at an apoapsis here, and we should be okay. Oop, that was the limit. Okay, seven kilometers. Guess we'll take that for now. At least this has a lot of Delta V to work with. And power. No electric charge problems here. Now we still have to make sure to maintain communication with this thing. It's got nice antennae, I mean four Commutron 16s, but it's still possible for us to lose communication, so Let's not take too much time to rendezvous with the Kelly 3 Earth Orbit Edition. Well, I'd like to make sure I'm controlling from this docking port, if it let me select it. There we go. Suppose lights on... well, we've got other lights too, but apparently I can't turn them on like this. Oops. I don't know why. 
I don't know why that panel isn't working to turn on the lights. I believe U is the, yes, U is the keyboard shortcut to turn on the lights. Where is our incoming spacecraft? Ah, completely the wrong way around. Yeah, flight computer out of power? Why is there no power on here? Oh. Well, it's not listing the power. This is uh, a little bit bugged out. It should at least have electric charge listed here. And you note the show stage only thing isn't showing up. So this is bugged out beyond just not having any crew. That's curious. Um, I also don't know why it ran out of electric charge at all. Um, well, activate fuel cell I can't actually do, but yeah, um, it had plenty of spa uh, solar panels and there weren't any Kerbals using the life support system. So it is a bit bizarre. Technically it didn't even have control. I'm pretty sure I left it with a good power situation when I left it. So, yeah, something went horribly wrong here. Yeah, we're having trouble lining up here. And it's because the target is rotating. Uh... Suddenly I can't, oh wait. Uh, no, 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 Kerbal. Um, why is parallel not parallel anymore? Oh boy. Well, we're sort of aiming for it mm. oh wait there's magnetism RCS off uh, come on magnetism oh thank goodness okay so it was just maybe oh, but that was pretty bad I thought the first one was better than that one but okay I'll take it control from here but, boy, is it not showing our resources. Um, let's shut down all of these engines. We have control, even though flight computer says out of power. But something about this is glitchy. And maybe it has something to do with the way the Gemini cabin normally doesn't like probe control. I'm actually sort of surprised this works right now. And I sort of had in the back of my head that maybe this wouldn't work and it'd be better to send the tug over to the station because remember how the Gemini cabin for some reason didn't like probe control if there's no crew on board we had a loss of control of our rockets sometimes so sort of surprised it worked like this anyway let's not complain too much we might as well use this fuel to refuel the tug actually we don't need that portion anyway. Actually, carrying that along was a useless sort of thing. But I, well, right now it's got more fuel than we can put into the tug, so I guess we'll carry it along until it's actually just enough to refuel it if we even get to that. Not exactly your standard space station rendezvous here. We're gonna be in render range and still probably above 50 meters per second. But altogether, a pretty efficient velocity matching burn. Yeah, a pretty good rendezvous burn altogether. Whoop. Okay, well, let's control from this side now. And we might as well dock the tug to the space station as well, just to have it around. Well, it uh, reads this as Kelly 3 Earth Orbit Edition, so that's positive. Okay, well, suddenly 
Uh, Magjeb went from closest approach distance of 140 meters to now less than one meter. I, I had pressed RCS at that point, so maybe that was something. But I don't know why it had the wrong number initially. We were pretty darn close here. Also, um, when I targeted the docking port on Spaceport 1, uh, Flight Computer again said out of power cannot run target Spaceport 1 docking port. I don't know what's up with Flight Computer saying it's out of power. We still have power here. Like our charge is fine. And we should be replenishing the pod even. Yeah, the pod is fully recharged now. So the pods recharge, everything should be recharged because we're carrying more than enough power. Yeah, even this uh, lander can is recharged. So why the heck the flight computer is out of power is beyond me. Oh boy. Come on, be magnetic. Uh, yeah? Okay, good. Alright, well, that's not the end of it. I'm not gonna have them EVA. I know I don't have connected living space. It's not technically okay for them to go through the tug, but I I would like them to just go over there. So ship manifest. One in this crew cabin. After all, I did the whole EVA mess previously, and that didn't turn out particularly well. At least it was very difficult. Okay, they're both in the Gemini cabin now. All right, let's let's bring them back home. Uh, first, let's use this bit to refuel the tug. Oh, and we could probably refuel the station a bit, just uh, in uh, nitrogen tetroxide there. Yep, I think I'm going to leave that as is, and we we're gonna separate now. Well, it's still not showing all the resources here and here. In fact, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I pro hopefully when we restart the game, it'll be all right. Temporarily, I'm going to move the fuel from here to down here, and we'll use these engines to deorbit. This is interesting. I guess we'll uh, retro burn around Japan and hope we splash down in the Atlantic. Or no, maybe we'll have to wait a little bit further than that. Maybe Hawaii would be a good place to retro burn to hit the South Atlantic. Though from this height, I'm not used to retro burning. So keep the station in orbit. Yeah. Uh, now it's, it says Vessel Tug Alpha Nico 404. I hope it's not confused. It's, thinks the Tug is the station. Now this pod has been tested on lunar missions. We should be alright here. We've got the regular ablator on it. And the lunar rated heat shield. Okay, it'd be better to just use the decoupler here because at least it has some force. If we try and decouple the lander can first off of this docking port, it's not going to drift far enough away. Uh, when we decouple this, this will likely collide into it and like bounce back on us or something. So might as well just treat this all as one entity. And I'm going to wait till it settles down. Okay, uh, let me just decouple. Alright, off it goes. Now, unlock these fuels. Retrograde and actually surface negative relative velocity for now. Let's arm the parachutes. I once again failed to redo how the RCS 
works, so we're still going to have trouble with roll. Well, we are currently over South America. Our periapsis is in the middle of the South Atlantic. And I believe we should uh, splash down before the west coast of Africa. Well, it doesn't have too much trouble doing roll here. Let's get the scent mode on. Well, let's let it finish roll first. Maybe it has trouble rolling with the scent mode on is the thing. That does complicate things a bit. Okay, we're below 100 kilometers now. Okay, now at 85 kilometers, we've already heard some explosions from the service module section. And there's some more. Sounds like a good distance off, so no problems there. And we're just starting out over the Atlantic, so I, I think it's safe to say we'll be splashing down. Just keeps exploding, doesn't it? Oh, there's some debris there too. Good thing none of it seems to be coming this way. But yeah, lots of explosions. Well, insofar as we're going to get flame effects, we are starting to get them. Again, don't expect too much of that. Okay, now at 2 G's, 58 kilometers in altitude. 3 G's, 51 kilometers in altitude. Okay, flame effects are diminishing. We are at 4 G's, 44 kilometers altitude. And we've reached our peak of 4.14 G's. Okay, now below 40 kilometers. Right smack in the middle of the Atlantic. Okay, we're now below the speed of sound, so I'm going to turn descent mode off. Oop. And smart ASS off. We'll just let the atmosphere do its thing. Full drogue shoot deployment. Main chute deployment. And we're at 5 meters per second as usual. Okay. And splash down. Recover vessel. I'm not letting anything go to chance there. Okay. Well, they're back. And I can't say it's the most outgoing mission I've ever done, but let's just check. Is the contract fulfilled? Um, well, it's not listed. Uh, crew duration record. That's not the same as the station record. Um, contract complete for space station. And we got 885 uh, reputation, and we're almost at zero now. So let's take a look at our contracts that are available. Lots of little bits got lost during that descent. Um, there's still, well, position a satellite in a specific orbit of the moon. Science data from the surface of Mars, well, they're not giving us much for it. Yeah, they're not giving us much for those. Lunar impactor again. So we'll, we'll, we still have to work on our, at least they're giving us interplanetary contracts, but yeah, we still have to work on our reputation to get some better, more lucrative ones. They're, they all seem uh, a little bit tight on the budget. Yeah, none of them gives us... Well, that one, human... human. Kerbal moon landing. Land on the moon three days. We could do that again. Uh, that'll give us plenty of reputation, or kill us again on the reputation if we fail. Maybe we should hold off on that for a little bit. I think I'll wrap it up here with this success and not push my luck. We got plenty of funds out of it. And uh, we'll have the Mars mission launch next time. And we'll probably do something else as well because just launching the rocket is not going and making the transfer is not going to be much. We'll perhaps focus on probish stuff. We'll see. 
I don't know what kind of other transfer windows are popping up. Let's say, well, that's Mars. Jupiter, not so much. Saturn, I guess, is possible. Let's add it in. Mercury is, you know, quite frequent on the transfer windows. Yeah, Saturn would be the next big one. We'll leave it there, and I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.